Marty usually describes my uh, background as a misbegotten youth, a checkered past, or can't hold a job. Well, the gory details on me you can see at shinnecock.com. That's S H I N N E C O C K.com. Now, I don't know about any of you, either virtually or here. Have you ever been at a dinner party where the host or hostess says to you, okay, Sal, give me a little known fact about yourself and all of a sudden you're paralyzed. What am I gonna say? Well, here's a fact for Marty. That happened to me last weekend, by the way, and I was paralyzed. Um, here's a little known fact. When I was 19, I started my first company and as a young whippersnapper, of course, I modestly called it ComSpec, standing for communication specialist. Anyway, I made three industrial motion pictures, one for Allstate, one for a copper company, and one for an automation company. So that's a little known fact. Then I woke up, finally, and said, I dropped out of school, I better go back to school. So I went to that Boston trade school. Better. Okay, I'm nibbling on your ear, Sal. Um, so I went to the Boston trade school and then went to Wall Street, which was an easy transition. There I started a raft of businesses and became a senior factotum. From there, and, and my swan song there was starting the Discover card. You may, I don't know, anybody have a Discover card? No. Well, there were 26 million of them back then. Uh, and by that time, it was no fun, so I quit. But here's how Shinnecock came to be. I woke up and said, Wall Street never had a fee they didn't like, and they're casual about risk. I see some heads nodding. And as a young punk, I embodied both of those things. So I started Shinnecock a long time ago, created a fund of funds that was uh, kind of an all weather fund and I'm happy to report it worked. From after that, I then stupidly went out to California to restructure for seven bloody years, California's largest insurance company picture this, some of you are young enough to remember. First Executive Corp had $20 billion in high yield bonds as Drexel was going under. Oops, oops. So I spent uh, the time and everybody got their money back, which nobody thought would happen. Well, that was fun. Then I ambled off to Goldman Sachs for a while in their private equity area. Everything was violently overpriced. But then I came up with a great idea, I thought. I said, imagine if you could give people the ability to compare insurance policies head to head. Wild. Everybody I talked to about it said, Snyder, it's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Of course, I was too dumb to know better. And I said, God damn it, I'm still going to do it. Many years later, growing from one person, your humble narrator, to 800, Allstate, God bless them, took it over, and we were the largest seller of auto and home in the US. That was an insurance exchange. It'll figure later in this story. Now, the best idea I think I've ever had is the company I'm gonna share at the end of this presentation called Asherex, Art Share Exchange. But Marty said, Snyder, no good, you can't start there. You have to talk about your art lending. Fair enough. Here's what we do in the art lending space. For dealers and gallerists, they need inventory financing. Or a major collector says, gee, I'd like to monetize part of my collection without selling it. So this is high-end museum quality fine art. Basically what we're doing is giving a one-year term loan where the borrower pays the insurance costs. 
and the borrower pays the storage costs and God bless them, they also prepay the interest and we subtract that from the loan proceeds. Now, the best part of this, as a borrower, what? You want to get repaid, correct? We hold the collateral in a bonded art warehouse. All over the world, we have some in London, we have some in Switzerland, we have New York, Miami, and California. So that's the trade. Why do I think it's so attractive? I'm typically the largest investor in what we do as an individual. The collateral is terrific. Museum quality fine art typically appreciates at around six to 8% per annum over the last 50 years. An extra buffer is a lender. Second, art is like gold. It moves around with currency fluctuations, but it's better than gold because it's easily transportable. That's pretty neat. What happened in 08, 09? You say, oh, everything correlates to one. In some degrees, true, except art, you may remember, probably tried to blot it out. In 2008 and 09, how many people know what the S&P declined? Anybody? For fun. S&P went down 50%. NASDAQ, oops, 72%. High-end museum quality fine art, yes, it went down. It went down 22% and recovered relatively quickly. That's one of the reasons why I think lending against this hard asset is particularly attractive. Okay. Clearly, I tilted windmills. We created a, a fund structure that is pretty bloody unusual. There is no effectively connected income for offshore investors. No 2% costs of having a Cayman feeder. No UBTI for tax qualified funds. And has anybody here invested in a credit fund ever? Oh my goodness, a couple. Well, you frequently get that ugly surprise in your K-1 and you say, wait a minute, you look down and you say, what's this expense? And those are the investment expenses that are not typically in a partnership or LLC tax deductible. Homeoeconomicus, I didn't think that was so nifty. So in our case, those expenses are tax deductible pre-tax. Saves about a hundred basis points. Not a lot, but every penny counts. All right, another way I tilted windmills. How many credit funds have been rated by a credit rating agency? I can't think of any, a couple that I actually am aware of. So one time I said, well, why don't we try to get our pooled vehicle credit rated? The credit rating agencies, well, we've never done that, Alan, but it sounds kind of fun. Maybe we should do it. Three months later, given the doctor that was just here, it was a proctological exam for three months. And here's the shocker. I almost fell off my chair. It was rated A plus, investment grade. Highly diversified, it has about a 38% loan to value of four month duration. Hmm, that's nice. And it's been clocking along at about 8%. We also do sidecars outside of that because we have a strict limitation of no more than 15% any single borrower, any single artist. Okay. However, we have big borrowers these big gallerists, dealers all over the world. And they say, Alan, I've got this terrific art. We say, yeah, but we can't do it in the fund. Well, why don't you do a sidecar or a co-invest, which we do. The negative, let's be real, less diversified, frequently though, a pool of art. 
So it's diversified by sculptor or painting, but not by borrower. And typically our borrowers, it's recourse to them. The yield on those is somewhere between nine and 11%. Uh, we haven't had any defaults, but I hasten to add, as every lender will, we will have a default at some point, guaranteed. But with a 38% LTV, gives me some comfort. Cottage finance for us. We've lent against approximately $263 million worth of art. Um, and uh, it's been a good business. Now, now the fun part before Marty gets the hook for me. This company called A Share X, not exactly trippingly off the tongue, but the Art Share Exchange. Imagine, turn up that imagination. I know it's lunchtime for some. Imagine a $10 million Picasso. How many people can own it? Damned few. And how many people wisely could own 10 pieces of art at that valuation to have a diversified portfolio? It's pretty tiny. What if we could give people the opportunity opportunity to own a fractional share of that museum quality fine art. We know that fine art appreciates more reliably than other art, has less downside risk and lower price volatility. Wow, wouldn't that be attractive? So what is this company doing? HRX is disruptive innovation. We will establish a trusted marketplace for buying and selling these fractional shares of art. We're gonna create market-based pricing. We will auction off the fractional interest in a very unique auction. Wow, not arbitrarily setting the prices for the art. We will deliver Liquidity. What if you buy one of these shares and your roof gets a leak and you got to put a new roof on? We will create a secondary market for these shares. All of this will be done with an SEC compliant execution, i.e. we have to follow the SEC. We have to have an SEC license transfer agent just like regular stockholders. I get excited about it. Having been in the art world for eight years, we're democratizing the ownership of otherwise unattainable art. A couple of other things we've learned. The art world is terrible, it's opaque. Most people when they buy art, don't get all of the information we get as a licensed lender. We're gonna change that. We're gonna give those exhibition histories, provenance, appraisals, expert opinions. We're gonna give that to these shareholders before they buy their shares. Very unusual. Second, there is no expensive intermediary saying, hey, Marty, you're too dumb to buy that piece of art. We'll buy it for you. Now, I don't know if you're as cynical as I am after my Wall Street heritage. Then they'll say to Marty, Marty, we know you don't know when to sell it, so we'll tell you when to sell that art. Now, I hate to be cynical, but are they selling it when it's timely for them or for Marty? We're not gonna do that. We're gonna empower the shareholders. They vote as to when to sell the art. No financial intermediary. And by the way, those financial intermediaries, there's a great one out there. Anybody 
heard of uh, Marketplace and all those guys out there. It's expensive. Very. They use a private equity deal structure. Picture this. They mark up the art 10%. I don't put grudges to them. They charge 1.5% per year in management fees for as long as the art is held. Some of the expenses are charged against the returns as well. And then when the art's sold, when they decide to sell it, there's a 20% tariff. Ooh, that's a lot. We are 300% less expensive. Now, any exchange requires buyers on the one hand and art sellers. Where the hell are we gonna get the art? Well, we're a lender. You're dealing with all these players. That's one source. A second source, we have a relationship with Bonhams and others. We deal with Christie's, Sotheby's, Phillips, and newly, I just met with the great people from Heritage in the great city of Dallas. Imagine for them, all of a sudden, we're going to bring this huge new cohort of potential investors to their auctions of high-end art. And those fractional bidders will compete against a 100% bidder. So we have to build that auction. That's another value step for Asherex. Pretty tricky. We spent the last three months designing it and we're in the process of programming it today. So less expensive, more information, liquidity in an otherwise illiquid market. Now, in theory, my colleague is somewhere in the virtual sphere. And I'd like to share with you, maybe going all the way back to my heritage, a visual of this new company. Ryan, if you're there, can you screen it? We'll see. I'm gonna, as soon as the video's over, I'll nail it, if it starts. <laughs> We need volume. <laughs> Ryan, put the volume high. Enter the words fine art and most of us think of museums and galleries. But fine art can be a fine investment. Art represents an investable asset class, and savvy investors have been reaping the rewards for many, many years. Global investments in physical art are estimated at $1.7 trillion, more than the entire private debt market. Trackable annual art sales total $65 billion with low correlation to both the S&P 500 and interest rates, purchasing fine art diversifies investment portfolios. Art is an attractive asset over the long run because it can generate a positive real return. Experts calculate the art market has returned 8% annually since 1972 and 5.5% since 2002. Higher priced artworks are generally more liquid and given their scarcity, can offer better returns than speculative lower priced artworks. Art is only 2% of total investable assets. Therefore, there is much room to grow for individual investment portfolios. While it's true that fine art has been a great investment, it's been unattainable for most of us until now. We want to give people the chance to invest in an asset class that's been great for very, very wealthy people, but not available to many others. And that's our goal in Asherex, to give them the chance to do something they've never been able to do before. The chance 
to buy into great art that has enduring value, value that appreciates over time. And that's what led to fractionalizing the ownership of these great pieces of art. The goal of any professional asset allocator, which is what we're asked to do, is to search for enhanced risk return profiles for investments. And so we're really looking to add return without adding a lot of risk into the portfolio at the same time. One thing we love about Share X is that you're going from a market that was really only the most affluent of affluent people who could afford this art to bringing it down and democratizing the space. Now you're allowing that store of value of wealth to be passed on to an entirely different subset of investors. Let's have some fun exploring AshareX's virtual gallery. It's in the metaverse and open to all. Here, you can view the artworks you and others may have purchased, browse current and upcoming auctions, and for the first time, find most everything needed to make an informed purchase of fine art. Imagine accessing critical information in one easy to use place. We include thorough due diligence about the artwork, a current fair market valuation by a pedigreed appraiser, a condition report, details about the artist, the artwork's provenance, recognized expert opinions, exhibition history, and a publication list. The A-Share-X auction allows bidders to purchase as many fractional interests as desired in a particular artwork. True flexibility. Purchases can be made online or by telephone, with market or limit bids similar to a traditional stock exchange. With modest price points, dramatically lower costs of ownership than those offered by others, and a transparent bidding process, finally everyone can prudently own fine art. After purchasing an ownership interest, you receive a limited edition NFT that includes a high-resolution image of the artwork you own, which can be displayed on a television or a digital picture frame at home or even in your office. And if you decide you want to sell ownership interest for any reason, the control is in your hands thanks to our secondary marketplace and its special tax benefits. The very best art to invest in is the very most valuable art. And that takes it out of the price range of all but the very wealthiest people. What a ShareX brings to this is the concept of being able to buy a share, let's say a 100th share. If one can do that, it's a great part of a portfolio. A ShareX would allow a whole level of investors to become involved with the purchase of investment quality art, which would expand the market and would be to the benefit of everybody on the seller side. In my opinion, buying a fractional interest of an asset with long-lasting real-world value is better than owning a purely digital offering like a Ford Ape or a CryptoKitty, because you don't know if those are going to drop down to zero overnight. We've seen this happen before, whereas paintings and great pieces of art, those have been around for hundreds of years, been great stores of value for hundreds of years, and are quite uncorrelated with the rest of the market. AsureX team has a great track record in terms of art investments. You have not only one, let's say, advisor that is telling you this is a good uh, asset that you should invest in, but you actually have a consortium, a committee of different people that are all relevant into the art space that are going to give uh, their own opinion. So it's like a vetting process if you want to see it that way. And that is what makes the investment itself much more concrete and secure. And it's bringing art to the masses. And it's also giving everybody an opportunity to participate and buy high quality or museum quality artworks. That's never happened before. It's really transformational. There's an opportunity for everybody, no matter where they are. You could be in Kansas and bidding on a Picasso. What could be more exciting? It's really an exciting opportunity for both art collectors and investors. And what it will do, it will expand the auction market 
for not just Bonham's, but I think for all the auction houses. HREX is the answer for a marriage of the traditional auction house and the new young collectors. Whether you're a first time art buyer, a seasoned collector, a seller, or a traditional investor, fine art is now accessible to everyone and diversification is made simple. A Share X, fine art for all. <laughs> Go ahead. <clears throat> The question is, what the hell is AsiaX, really? <laughs> AsiaX is a facilitator, whether it's working with a great firm like Heritage in participating in an auction with them where we're bringing this new cohort of potential buyers. It's also where we run the secondary exchange. It's that as well. But we're an exchange. We're not a money manager charging the shareholder a bunch of incremental fees. You asked about Masterworks. Masterworks is a great company. They have spent a large fortune expanding and selling the concept of art as an asset class. And they're right, it is. Now, they choose to execute it as a money manager. Just to summarize, they charge 10% markup on the art, 1.5% per year as long as they hold the art, some of the expenses, and a 20% exit fee. Versus AsiaX, which is an exchange in effect, and an, uh, facilitating with the heritages and bottoms of the world, the auction, we don't charge those kind of fees. So we're 300% cheaper to own. Now, most art buyers, a lot of art buyers, either are self-directed consumers. By the way, here's an interesting statistic. 90% of the art purchased through auction is for $50,000 or less. Perfect. We're going to help those people invest in more durable art. So that's the masterworks position. All right, they're bringing their expertise to the table. We're saying the self-directed consumer, think of the people that go to Schwab, Robin Hood, Fidelity, Vanguard, or have their own independent art advisor, or art advisors, let's say at Heritage or Bonhams or another auction house, kind of duplicative. So we're avoiding that. Another question. We're creating, it's interesting, it gets into some details. There's a broker dealer that we're using, some called Templum, which is an ATS, an alternative trading system. You have to have a broker dealer involved, as I know you know. And we bring the buyers and sellers together. And we do have the ability to participate in that secondary market. In fact, even in the auction itself. So we can perform all of those roles. Now, clearly, this is a huge market. The technology, this is back to my creating the insurance exchange days. The market is huge for this. The technology to stitch it together, if I, I had brown hair when I started this, now it's gray, is hard, hard work. We expect to be live in April of 2023. We have a whole team beavering away while I'm here gallivanting around in, in this great city of Dallas. Some of the team, important. You heard my misbegotten youth. 
Our CTO is at a company called Sapient, if you may know them, Rapid Application Developer. He's one of their leads, went on and did a whole raft of other things. He is a kick-ass manager of building software at scale. Our CFO ran a $6 billion hedge fund for AQR and grew up in that end of the business. Had two startups. One failed. I thought it was fantastic, actually. He didn't. But I said, boy, did you have a learning curve in that. One was quite successful. Our CMO is a product manager at uh, Taco Bell, Mattel, and was also at an agency. Pretty neat. I could go on, but those are some of the people actively engaged in doing this. We've got a development team of 15 people hard at it. All right. Here's what warms this young man's heart. There are countless exits. When I built the insurance exchange, I raised too much money, $200 million, stupid Allen, in truth. So it made, there weren't a hell of a lot of people that could buy it, thank you, Allstate. Not a lot of potential purchasers. For AsureX, our investors will decide what to do with it. But think about it. Every auction house, whether it's us or somebody else, I warrant to you, will have to own this capability. Either build it or buy it. Here's a wild card. I see some of the heritage all-stars in the back of the room. There are four or five major NFT platforms trading for more than a billion dollars. Open Seas, the biggest, volumes down a little bit, to say the least. Their most recent valuation was at 13 billion. Imagine if they owned this capability. I submit they would give every other player in the business a run for their money. In addition, the technology here applies to any hard asset. Collectibles, perfecto. We've talked to several collectible companies. Auctioning off high-end cars, those split window um, Corvettes is an example. It applies to my youth. I started a big real estate syndicator. It applies to real estate. All of those people, that this capability does not exist today. I'm sure there are lots of people working on it. The auction system is a value point for what we're doing is value unto itself. Now, to get started, I raised a safe. It was talked about earlier. That's gotten us started building away. We're in the process, God forbid, in case any of you have interest, of raising another $10 million. Unusually, since I personally invest in venture stuff, venture deals, they do an A round, they do a B round, they do a C round. Oh my God, sometimes it takes forever. This round for us will be the last. The company is intrinsically profitable, will be, given its revenue sources. So this will be once and done and up shortly. 